Good morning, and uh, here we are at the BBC Radio in Cornwall, where we're about to talk and have a cup of coffee with Lawrence Reed, our great friend, about President Trump's acquittal and uh, a number of other things, including, of course, his trillion tree reforestation uh, global program, which is uh, really fantastic news. So uh, that's where we are today. You can tune in, actually, to BBC Radio Cornwall uh, on the internet. You can find it under BBC Radio Cornwall. And uh, you can listen to the Lawrence Reed show. I'll be on it between 12.30 and 1 o'clock. Uh, English term. We'll be hearing from a friend of Donald Trump at Tintagel Hotelier as the president of, in, avoids impeachment. That joining us live in the studio is uh, a friend of Donald Trump, John Mappin from Tintagel Castle Hotel. Uh, John, just take us back. How did you become friends? Well, uh, you know, we uh, predicted that he would win within about three hours of him coming down the escalator. And we made a bet with William Hill and uh, we happened to predict that accurately. And as a result of that, his son uh, called me after they won the election and he thanked us for all of the work that we we did because in fact we ran uh, really very much a sort of a private campaign to support the president because I really believed in what he was promising to do. He does get short shrift in the press, it's fair to say. Uh, he, oh, was, yeah, he, he was impeached over allegations he improperly sought help from Ukraine to boost his chances of re-election. As we heard yesterday, he was cleared on these two charges by a majority of senators at the trial. Did you know that was going to happen? What was your reaction? Well, I mean, if you read the transcript of the call, clearly he did absolutely nothing wrong. The fact of the matter is, is the Bidens and the Clinton machine has been incredibly corrupt. And he was elected by the American people to drain the swamp in Washington. That's what he was elected to do. Um, the Biden family have taken millions of dollars out of the Ukraine. And that is the cover up that uh, they are trying to hide at the moment. And what's going to be most exciting now is the presidential counterpunch. And I think today at 12 o'clock from the White House, um, we are going to now see the president go on the offensive. Uh, the uh, academic uh, from Bristol, um, you know, just has completely lost touch with where the American people are. The American people are furious with the permanent political class in Washington, and he was elected to basically rout them out. Has it been a witch hunt? I mean, is the press out to get him because they just don't like him? I think the press was wrong-footed day one. They basically locked themselves into an idea. Um, in fact, you, Lawrence, have been extremely fair in relation to President Trump, and as has the BBC in Cornwall. Um, but uh, the, certain commentators, you know, they got a fixed idea about him, and nobody really thought he was going to win. I call it the Pennsylvania penny drop on election night when all of a sudden Pennsylvania went, then the Mexican peso dropped, then Florida went, and then they started saying, well, let's now campaign against Donald Trump. Um, prior to that, their campaign was completely ineffective. Mm. Uh, but five of his key aides have admitted offences for wrongdoing. I'm just going to run through the list. Right. Because everyone is saying, you know, the, the supporters, he's a decent man, la da da da, -da. Paul Manafort uh, got 47-month prison sentence for fraud. Michael Cohen... Trump's lawyer and fixer testified before Congress, making some explosive claims about the president from hacked emails to hush money. Michael Flynn was briefly the national security advisor. A mere 23 days before he resigned, he pled guilty to charges that he lied to the FBI about contacts with Russia. Rick Gates, US President uh, Donald Trump's former deputy campaigns manager, admitted charges of conspiracy and lying to investigators in a plea deal. And George Papadopoulos, ex-Trump aide, jailed for 14 days for lying to the FBI. So Donald Trump isn't a clean person, is he, if he mixes with these people? I think you have to understand the nature and the way that the campaign came together. This was a grassroots moment. Um, various different people joined the campaign. I think you will, funnily enough, see Flynn completely exonerated. Um, the others, I think they got caught doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. Um, there are some very draconian 
laws in America when it comes to being investigated by the FBI. Um, and, you know, if you are under deposition, I believe it's the case, I'm not an expert in this area, but I believe if you say one thing that is slightly inaccurate, that becomes a federal offence. Do you so, think, uh, I'm going to bring Jill in from Stoke Climsland, um, hmm. do you think we're obsessed with Donald Trump? The world, the media, people, just you and I talking about it now. Well, he's doing some amazing things. I mean, you know, at the State of the Union, he has announced a one trillion tree uh, re global reforestation programme. That makes him the most important environmentalist that has ever lived on planet Earth. Even though he's backing the coal lobby? Well, you see, he, he's backing the clean coal lobby. Uh, no, there is as clean coal. Isn't well, it? you know, there's there's a difference, and I think that was something that he agreed to do. Um, that's his choice. Uh, okay. Certainly, a trillion trees would compensate for let, that. Let me let me bring in Jill. Jill, afternoon to you. Hello. Um, so I suppose the question is: Are we obsessed with Donald Trump? And is he as bad as perhaps the media portray? Um, I don't think he's as bad as the media portray. I, I don't know of one politician or MP that I would particularly say was, you know, a really nice person. They've all got, um, well, so many of them have got um, things within their world and their politics that we don't like. But we do seem to be obsessed with Donald Trump. I don't know whether I like him as, um, well, he's a bit of a showman, he is a bit... Um, he is a bit brash, he is a bit sort of cocky and all these sort of things, so I don't necessarily like that. But I love the fact, I love the fact that he is all for the country. Um, he wants to see America thrive, become financially stable. He, he, he seems to want the best for his country and the people. And what more can you ask a politician than that? Uh, let me just bring in... Let me... Politicians okay. that have let us down, have let the Americans down. You know, I mean, Tony Blair took us to war, and yet we still talk to him about Brexit and what's good for the country and everything else. No, it, no, okay, let me, hang on a minute. Let me, let me just bring in, if I may, our, our, our studio guest here. What, what do you make of what Jill Well, I think, I, I think Jill is spot on, and I think she, her view actually reflects the view of the average American person. Certainly, I spend a lot of time in America, and, um, you know, I don't think anybody in America thinks that Donald Trump is perfect. Um, no. Who is perfect? Um, exactly. But he and, is. Uh, he... The, the thing that I feel is um, because he's driven to sort of make America great again, and he keeps saying that. I, I where, how can we fault that in well, some way? Wanting the best for the people of the country. Right. Plus, it, it very rarely gets well. mentioned. He's not taking a salary at all. Um, he gives that to charity every quarter. Um, you know, and the things that he actually has gotten done, funnily enough, the true story of what he actually has gotten done uh, for the nation of America is far more interesting than the lies that the mainstream media spouts out um, 19 to the dozen, excluding, yeah, of course, BBC Radio Cornwall. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you said that. The American people voted him in. They voted him in. You're right. They All right. chose to um, pick him and he is doing what he said. I mean, you can hear all the things that he said he was going to do, and he's aiming for those things. You can't fault someone for trying to achieve the things that they were elected on. Does he go about it the right way, though? He's been word. accused... This is what they said they were going to do. But he yeah, does it... happier in this country. Does he go about it the right way, though? I mean, he's been described as, you said, being brash, he, he homophobic. There's been allegations that he's a racist. Um... Is he the right sort of person? I mean, sending tweets as well, it's almost, some would say, childish behaviour. Well, he's, he, well, yes, but he's not, he's not perfect. I mean, that's, that is obvious. He's got faults, and um, there are going to be things that are going to irritate someone somewhere. And if you didn't vote for him, you're going to be irritated with everything he does. OK, Jill, thank you. I'll leave it there. So, talking about voting, um, mm. John Mappin, um, He's going to stand again. There's no question about he's that. He's going to stand. I think he's going to win. You think he is going to win? Yeah. The odds are so lousy this time, I'm not even bothering with a bet. I mean, it, I think he is going to win. And one of the very interesting, probably one of the brightest people in the Trump campaign is a guy called Brad Parcell, who collects up all of their data and he runs the rallies. Uh, he's in charge of the 2020 campaign. 
a huge percentage of the people turning up to rallies are Democrat voters. I think it's 37% of the people that turned up to the last rally are registered Democrat. And all of these addresses and names and telephone numbers get collected at every rally. The, the, the Trump re-election machine, I mean, they really didn't stop. You know, they won the election and the machine continued on the very next day. They've actually been campaigning for the last uh, few years. So um, I do think he'll be re-elected. Um, and if he is, what does it mean? We know about Brexit. We've now officially come out, although there's, we've got this period of grace for about 12 months. What does it mean for the UK? I think, it means, I think it means, first and foremost, world peace. I think it means a renaissance for trade. Um, I know for sure, because I've discussed it at the very highest levels, that he plans to do a fantastic trade deal with the UK. He loves the UK, um, in spite of the fact that the UK uh, press have been, you know, a little unreasonable towards him. But that he's not going to let that stop his love for England. He loves the Queen. Um, and the point that the lady made before about him standing in front of the Queen, actually, uh, that didn't happen. It's actually an angle. And if you watch the full clip, the Queen actually ushered him forward in front of her. So that's another example of sort of propaganda that's been sort of created to, you know, give people a strange impression of him. But he's... You're a mate of his. Uh, you talked to him. Uh, you've been over with your wife and met his family. When's he come, coming back to Tintagel then, to well, meet your family? you know what, Lawrence, um, you don't know this, but or maybe you do, but you are actually extremely popular in Washington, D.C., and are known as one of the BBC's most trusted uh, radio journalists because all of the interviews that we've had over the last three years on the subject of Donald Trump, I have sent over to the White House. So actually, Lawrence Reed is very well respected in the White House. So if he does come to Tintagel, you are going to be guest of honour and perhaps we can do a, uh, a radio show from Camelot Castle. Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. That, that will happen. I'll make that happen. Uh, nice to meet you again, John. Lovely Thank to see you. Thank you for coming in, John. Mm. Coming all the way down from Tintagel. Uh, keep the calls coming in. 0808 100 1039. If you like, Shep. Well, I'm well known in Washington. You heard that? Brilliant. Brilliant. I love it as if you weren't. <laughs> I know. If I wasn't what? Already well known in Washington, yeah, all places. Yeah, so you, you, got out, you got out of that one well, didn't you? That, uh, she started digging this hole, which she's managed to get out of it. All right, keep the cause coming in. <laughs>